The country is rotting in front of everybody's eyes. And if you're too deaf to see it, all you had to do was turn on the presidential reality show. Hello, everyone. Gerald Salent, our guest warns. You're going to see a banking crisis the likes of which we've never seen before, says the American trend forecaster and publisher of the Trends Journal. He tells Daniela Cambone that U.S. society is in decline post-COVID. Yet the people in power are incompetent to tackle the issues in front of our eyes, drug overuse, rising crime rates, and a decayed public transportation system. He also warns that banks are defaulting one after another, with insufficient coverage by mainstream media. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Watching uh, Fed Powell speak yesterday, you know, saying, hey, he likes what he's seeing on the inflation front. And I'm thinking there's such a disconnect to your point about housing, cars not moving off lots, uh, credit card debt at all time high, Americans using debt to, to, to get a trip to Disneyland for their kids. There's such a disconnect with what American, everyday Americans are facing. And to your point about the debt, just some numbers here, we're at $2 trillion in annual deficits and $100 trillion of baseline deficits, Gerald, projected 2050. How do we get off this trajectory? It's not going to. It's going to be the crash of the dollar at some point. America's gone the way of the country that we fought against back in the revolution. Uh, Great Britain. Sun never sets on the British Empire. We fight wars all over the world. Oh, yeah. Then you had World War One and you, the pound went dead because you kept fighting these wars. The same things happened to America. The trillions and trillions of dollars going to fight wars as the country's rotting in front of our eyes. I mean, you live in New York City. I went down to city uh, uh, two weeks ago. I still live down in West Village. The West Village is one of the hottest spots around. Now I see guys like this all drugged out, watching guys shoot up. Everywhere where, where, there's, uh, where they're doing construction and they have this shaffling over there, scaffolding, all underneath it, all homeless people. Oh, yeah. Roads are rotted in front of us. The, the, how, about, how about the train system in America? Isn't it great? The New York subways are not in Calcutta. Amtrak is crap track when you go around the world and you see the high-speed rail. The country is rotting in front of everybody's eyes. And if you're too deaf to see it, all you had to do was turn on the presidential reality show and see the clown show that we had called a debate. These are the people running the country. They're, they're out of control morons and imbeciles that have destroyed what used to be the land of opportunity. Oh, how about how about the, the vanguards and the, and the black rocks and the um, and, and, and the state streets that own what? Uh, together, the largest shareholders of 40 percent of all U.S. companies and 88 percent of the S&P 500 that's according to uh, a study done that was reported in Business Insider. Once upon a time, this used to be the land of opportunity. Oh, you want to talk about the equity markets? The gang is running it in front of everybody's eyes. What land of opportunity? Actually, Tulsi Gubbard, uh, kind of, I, I thought of you, she was doing an interview and this was her quote. She said, does anyone really believe after seeing the debate that Biden is in charge? The real power lies with the deep state, intel agencies and propaganda media who got him elected in the first place. I mean, I was I was um, I don't know if you caught that interview, but I yeah. thought, wow, at least she's she's saying it out loud. Yeah, again, we, we've been saying this for years. There's nothing new about it. the media is dead. Oh, talking about Great Britain. Look who's running CNN, the Cartoon News Network. Oh, they brought somebody over from the UK. Oh, who's running Bloomberg now? Oh, somebody from the UK. Who's running the Washington Post? Oh, somebody from the UK. Who's running the Daily Call? Oh, somebody from the UK. There's no media anymore. Again, 
That little slime ball, every time he got caught with his pants down, bombs away over Baghdad. Bill Clinton, yeah, he did away with the Federal, Communica- the Federal Communications Act, 19- 1996. Did away with all the restrictions, and now you got six companies controlling 92% of the media. There used to be thousands of independent radio stations, newspapers, TV stations. Now the big zone everything. Again, they did with the Robinson, Batman Act, Sherman Antitrust Act, Clayton Antitrust Act, Glass-Steagall Act, one after another. When I was a young guy, there were things called grocery stores, hardware stores, stationery stores, drug stores. Now they're all chains. You like Staples? No, I like Home Depot. Oh, give me that Walmart. They've destroyed this country. Again, you look at the new job numbers coming out. And look where they are. They're, oh, they're in the service sector, healthcare sector. They're not high paying jobs. So when you look at the reality and you get, and you look at the numbers and you look at the equity markets, Main Street and Wall Street have nothing to do with each other. And there's going to be a crash coming. There's going to be a crash that nobody's talking about that we've been warning about. And that is, again, let's go back to the COVID war. Lock down all the businesses. People's forced to work at home. People are working at home and they're saying, I'm, after week after week, month after month, year after year, they're saying, I'm getting up at five o'clock in the morning to travel an hour and a half each way. Cost me all this money and I'm destroying my life. I'm not doing it anymore. And the guy that don't, or the people that have the tenants there, the, the guy renting the space say, I don't see him in these cubicles anyway. Yes, yeah, stay home. I don't need all this space. Your office, oh, California, first one to lock down. Your office vacancy rate, empty buildings, 37% in San Francisco. You know what it was before the COVID war? 3.5%. Nationally, you're looking at about 20% vacancy rate, vacant. Office occupancy rates, according to Castle Systems with a K, 51.4%. Occupancy. Okay, how about all the businesses that depended on commuters? Oh, they're going out of business. How about all the defaults that you're going to see as there are less tenants and these are interest rate only loans and your interest rates are double what they were when you bought the buildings and now you can't pay your loans. You're going to see a banking crisis, the likes of which we've never seen before. No one is reporting on it. Silent. No one is reporting on it. And what's brewing is the question. I mean, what are you hearing and seeing on that front? How close are we to uh, another crisis here? They're going to do everything they can not to have a crisis before the election. That that's guaranteed. But whether or not they can do it is, is a guessing game. Even when you're looking at the official numbers coming from the, the feds, you're looking at about 22 banks that are, that are facing problems. Other data is showing up to almost 300. Again, barely being reported, and you're having one default after another, hardly being reported. And now let's go back when they dumped all this money into the, when when Trump and Biden dumped all this dough into uh, into the system to artificially prop up the economy when the COVID war, when they locked down everything. Your interest rates are at zero. So now the banks own all these worthless treasuries. So they don't have the money to cover the defaults on the loans. Mm. There's going to be a crisis. And we're saying, again, you know, one of our top trends for 2024 was a golden year for gold. As we're speaking, gold is, what, $2,360 an ounce. It's up over $300 an ounce since we made that forecast. Gold could very well hit $3,000 an ounce this year because they're the geo. You know, before I came on, uh, on with you, I wanted to see what one of the headline stories was on CNN. The son of Asia's richest man is getting married in one of India's most lavish weddings of the year. What the hell are you telling me this crap for? What's going on in Ukraine? What's going on in Russia? What's going on in Lebanon? What's going on in Iran? What's going on in Israel? 
Did Taylor Swift, you know, what? this is the crap they're putting out. This is the, what the hell do I care? Some clown getting married in, in India. Why, he's rich and you should know that. People don't have a clue. So going on, World War Three's already begun. We'd forecast this. We forecast World War Three. You go back to our Trends Journal magazine two days before the Russian invasion. From COVID war to Ukraine war to World War. And now what's going on with the Israel war? Ramping it up against Hezbollah in Lebanon. And what did Iran say? You attack Lebanon and you go after Hezbollah full force, we're going to wipe you out. Love it, hate it, agree, disagree with anybody you want. That's not what we do. We just put down the facts and give you the implications. There is going to be oil prices. You're already looking now at Brent crude. It's almost $86 a barrel. Oh, it just moved up, what, about another $5 a barrel. They go to war with Iran. You're going to see oil prices go to Belva. And, and, oh, and they're going to keep launching more and more attacks against Russia because the United States and NATO gave them more weapons to uh, go deeper into that. They're going to be attacking oil fields, refineries, pipelines, et cetera. You're going to see oil prices could go up to $130 a barrel. And that's going to crash global economies and the equity markets. And again, the banking crisis is going to crash global equity markets and the economy. Again, and, and these are realities. These are in front of everybody's eyes to see. But again, we got to know, you know, who's, who's having sex with who and what are the rich people doing? Um, and, 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 is, and is Jennifer Lopez getting divorced? Um, <laughs> you get it. We're joking. But... To your point about how no one's really talking about the real issues, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Gerald, I believe he's the only world leader that has openly said this, and it was kind of swept under the table, didn't make any headlines, people dismissed it. Oh, it's just the Serbian president, who cares? Yep. But Alexander Vucic said, quote, I expect this situation to escalate in the coming months and expect that we will face very serious consequences. I'm talking Europe, I'm talking the world. We're living in the time of the greatest geopolitical crisis since the Second World War. And I want to tell you for the sake of history, since I, of course, have certain knowledge more than ordinary citizens uh, and, and knowledge that I rely, rely on through conversations with the biggest world leaders, I expect the situation to escalate in the coming months. Coupled with another headline uh, that was kind of swept under the table of how most U.S. Uh, bases in Europe are on high alert now for a terrorism attack. I mean, I get it because I'm reading, you know, the news out of Italy. Um, but I was kind of surprised to hear this comment from Vucic because here's a world leader openly stating the obvious. I, I mean, is he one of the few? Am I wrong there that has openly come out saying this? <laughs> yeah, he's one of the few, and a number of people have been warning it. And again, we've been, you know, we do trend forecasting. We, 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 you know, we we tell you what it is before it happens. And again, we're looking at the data going on here. You know, one of my lines is, "When all else fails, they take you to war," mm -hmm. and and that's exactly what's going on. You look here. You go back to the Israel war. People forget. And again, we did that interview. Uh, just when yes. it happened and it's very heartbreaking and people could see it by putting in Cambodia and Salenti. And we said what was going on in Israel, people forgot all about this. The, there were 39 weeks of judicial protest, a protest against Netanyahu's judicial reform act. Not my language, the language of the prime minister of Israel, Isaac Herzog said there was a civil war going on, a civil war going on before the Hamas attack. All forgotten about. All forgotten about. When all else fails, they take you to war. You want to talk about more? This is in your Trends Journal this week. Putin says Russia will produce new nukes in response to U.S. escalation. All right. It, 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 That's ter it's terrifying. Yeah, I know. It's terrifying. I know. Like we're talking nuclear war. Yeah. So Putin's having visits in North Korea, in Vietnam. And what are we doing, Gerald? We're, we're, we're escalating it. That's all we're doing it. And uh, again, 
You're, you're looking at what, what, what Iran is saying. One after, Iran warns Israel, full-scale war with Lebanon will wipe you out. Again, it's in your Trends Journal. We only report, by the way, as you do, you go to, di- we subscribe, we pay to go to different sites, like, like haha, that's the Israeli news. Uh, you get Times of Israel, Jerusalem Post for free. Uh, we go to them. We go to IRNA, ISNA, Tehran Times. We want to hear what they're saying. We go to Al. We want to hear what the world is saying. Yes. And then we give our analysis and our forecasts. So we're not selling propaganda like each country is putting out what they want the people to know. So people have no idea what's going on. Oh, you forgot this one. We didn't talk about Justin Timberlake got arrested for a DWI. What the yes, hell are you yes. telling me this crap for? What the You're hell right. are you telling me this crap for? Day after day after day after day. Day after day after day after day. As the world is rotting in front of our eyes. As people are stressed out. As, as suicide rates go up. Again, we're talking about New York City. Filth all over the streets. All garbage, garbage city. It breaks my heart to see what's happened as a a guy born in the Bronx. Breaks my heart to see the decline of America and the country that I love so much. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gerald Salent. If you enjoyed this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.